Hey guys, this is Ankit and welcome to the Google Cloud Platform Task Series. We are doing a list of basic tasks to get ourselves familiar with Google Cloud Provider, that is GCP. We are following the DevOps engineer and SRE learning path, also available at cloudskillsboost.google slash fast. You can always get more details by going to my repository, thecloudterminal01 slash learn hyphen DevOps. So today's task is going to be a bit longer, but we'll be learning a lot from this task. We have the following objectives. We will be configuring and using the issue gateways. We will apply default destination rules for all the available versions of services that we have. We will apply virtual services to route by default to only one version of our app. We will route to a specific version of a service based on user identity. We will shift traffic gradually from one version of our microservice to another. We will use Anthos Service Mesh dashboard to view routing to multiple versions. Finally, we will set up networking best practices such as retries, circuit breakers, and timeout. The total amount of time we'll be spending will be around 37 to 40 minutes. So let's begin. Anthos Service Mesh's traffic management model relies on following two components. There is a control plane component that manages and configures the envoy proxies to route traffic and enforce policies. And there is a data plane component that encompasses all the network communication between the microservices performed at runtime by the envoy proxies. Before we move on to our subtasks, let's first understand a few Kubernetes resource types which we are going to use in our subtasks. In issue, when an incoming request arrives at a Kubernetes cluster, it first reaches the gateway resource and then the virtual service resource. The gateway resource receives the incoming traffic and is responsible for routing the traffic to correct virtual service based on the specified rules. The virtual service resource then applies additional routing rules to further direct the traffic to appropriate destination service or port. Let's go down and have a look at this diagram. Over here, we can see that uh, there is a public ingress gateway, a private ingress gateway, and an egress gateway. Ingress means traffic is coming into the network and egress means traffic is going out of the network. So the traffic from public network reaches the public ingress gateway, public ingress gateway along with virtual services, which is not shown in this diagram, decide where exactly the traffic should be routed to. It can be either service X or service Y. Now let's have a look at Kubernetes manifests, which we'll be using in our tasks. First, let's have a look at the destination rule kind manifest. The destination rule is an issue resource that defines policies to apply to traffic intended for a specific service instance. It is used to configure traffic management features such as load balancing, circuit breaking, and fault injection. For example, in this case, we are creating a destination rule with the name product page. This, this particular field specifies the host name to which the destination rule will apply to. Over here, we are applying the destination rule to product page service. Here, we are defining the subset of product page service called v1 that has a label of version v1. This defines the connection pool setting for the service. Specifically, it is limiting the maximum number of TCP connections to one and the maximum number of pending HTTP requests per connection to one. And likewise, we have other properties as well that we are defining for this particular service. In this destination rule, we are defining policies for all the services that we'll be having this one is for product page service. This is for review service. And this one is for rating service. And over here, we have destination rule for detail service. Now let's have a look at the 
kind gateway resource type this basically creates a public ip for us the name of the gateway is book info gateway it will be in ingress namespace this is the server configuration that will be present our server will be listening on port 80 the name of the port is http and uh, this specifies the protocol that will be used by the port we will be using http protocol for this over here we are saying that uh, this is the list of host that the gateway will accept traffic for in this case we are using a wildcard character because we want to accept traffic for all hosts let's have a look at kind virtual service we'll be creating a lot of virtual services in our different subtasks over here in this particular manifest file we are creating four virtual services product page reviews ratings and details if we specifically look at the product page virtual service we will see that this particular section defines that it will route all traffic to v1 subset of product page service and over here we are specifying that the host name that this virtual service applies to is product page service and so forth we can infer about other virtual services as well let's start with our first subtask in our cloud shell, we will set the environment variables for zone and cluster names. So I'm going to copy this and let's go over here and run it. Now we'll configure the kubectl command line access by running this command. Let's check that our cluster is up and running. So our cluster is up and running already. Now let's ensure that Kubernetes pods for Anthos service mesh control plane are deployed. They are there. Now we'll ensure that Kubernetes services for Anthos service mesh control plane are deployed. So let's check the services. They are there as well. And let's check the ports in ASM system namespace as well, which are also, which is also present. Now let's verify the booking for deployment. We will validate the ports and services in the default namespace. So we have the deployment and services already present in the def default namespace. Let's move on to our next subtask. We will install gateways to enable ingress. So let's first create a namespace ingress. Let's label the gateway namespace with a revision label for auto injection. Now let's download and apply the gateway configuration files. These include the pods and services that will first receive the incoming request from outside the cluster. So we'll be specifically cloning this repository and applying the manifest present in gateways folder. So let's clone this. and apply the manifest present in this path. Now let's validate the pods and services created in the ingress namespace. So I'll just copy this and run it over here. The command is already run and we can see that the pods and services are created and this is the external IP that got created.
Now we are going to deploy the gateway to specify the port and protocol to be used. In this case, the gateway enables the HTTP protocol over port 80. This is the same gateway that we discussed in the earlier part of the video over here. So I'm going to go over here, copy this and run it over here. So gateway is created. One thing we should ensure that the gateway resource must be located in the same namespace as the gateway deployment. Now we are going to deploy the virtual service to route traffic from gateway ports and services that you just created into the book info application. Again, the virtual service resource must be created in the same namespace as the application. So I'm going to copy this part as well. and run it over here. Let's have a look at the virtual service that we're creating over here as well. So I'll go to this file. Over here, we'll see that uh, this particular field specifies the list of hosts that this virtual service applies to. In this case, we're using a wildcard character because we want to say that you have to match all hosts this field specifies the list of gateway resources that this virtual service will apply to. Just now we created the book info gateway. So this virtual service will apply to that book info gateway that we created over here. So th these fields specify the list of HTTP path matching rules that the virtual service will apply to. In this case, it is using a set of URI path matching rules. This field specifies an exact match for the URI path. This field specifies a prefix match for the URI path. So whenever there is a match, we have to send the request to a particular destination. So these fields specify the list of destination that matching traffic will be routed to. So this field specifies the destination host and port for the matching traffic. In this case, the host is the product page service and the port at which the traffic will be routed at will be 9080. Now let's go back and run the following commands. We'll verify that the gateway and virtual service have been created. So I'll copy this. Our gateway resource was created and also the virtual service resource is also created and it's pointing to the book info gateway. Now I'll save the external IP in our cloud shell environment. The gateway address is this one. Now let's generate some background traffic. For that we will be installing Sage. Let's go over here and install Sage. I'll run the installation command, wait for it to complete. Once this is completed, I'll use Sage to create traffic against our services. So we have initiated the traffic. Now we'll open another tab and leave the traffic already running in this tab. We have to initialize our new Cloud Shell tab as well, just like we did in the beginning for our first Cloud Shell tab. So I'll go over here and run this command. We can also access our book info application at this particular URL. So let's go back over here and copy this URL path and access it in this session. So this is our book info application. I'll go back. 
Now let's confirm that the book info application responds by sending a curl request to it from some port within the cluster. For example, we'll be sending it from the ratings port. So I'll run this command. Over here, we are getting the name of the ratings port and then running this curl command inside the port. So we are sending a curl request to product page service at this port and uh, this is the endpoint. And we are expecting that this particular string will be present in the output. So let's see by running the command whether we are successful or not. So I'll go over here and run the command and we get the result. So we are able to access from inside the cluster. We should also be able to access it from outside by using the gateway URL. This we have already tested by opening it in another Chrome session. Let's test it by using a curl command. So I'll run it from inside the shell and we get a 200 OK response. Let's use Anthos Service Mesh Dashboard to view routing to multiple versions. So I'll go back over here, open this in new tab, and let's go to Anthos, click on Service Mesh. Let's select the product page service, go to Connected Services, these are the inbound services. We have issue ingress gateway and ratings. And if you go to outbound, you'll see that these are the outbound services, details and reviews. You can see that the traffic is MTLS encrypted. Now let's select review service over here. We will see that review service gets selected. And this is the outbound section for the review service. Review service is calling the rating service. Let's go to infrastructure section. Over here, we can see the requests per second for different pods. We have three versions of this app running, V1, V2, and V3. If you go to traffic, we can see that the traffic is almost evenly distributed among all the three versions of review service that are running right now. Now let's go back to Anthos Service Mesh homepage. We can view the topology of our entire uh, setup as well over here. We can change it as per our convenience. And you can get a detailed info about any of the services by clicking on expand and you will see that over here as well we have three versions of review service running. Let's go ahead and apply default destination rules for all available versions. We will be creating destination rules as per this particular URL. So I will go ahead and copy this command and run it over here. I'm running the command the second time. That's why I'm getting unchanged. You can run this command to check whether they are created or not. So the destination rules have been created. Now let's move on to our next subtask. We want to route traffic to only one version of our service. For that, we will be creating virtual services. In this case, we want to route traffic to V1. So if you see all the virtual service manifests, you will see that they are routing traffic to V1 subset of the services. So I'll go ahead and apply this manifest in our cluster. So they are created. Let's get our virtual services. All of them are present. Let's echo the gateway URL. So now if we go back and visit our product page, no matter how many times we uh, refresh the product page, we will see that we do not see stars over here. This is because this version of review service does not access the star rating service.
let's go back to our anthos service mesh and go to table view select the review service select traffic and you will see that the traffic on r1 review service has started to increase and if you go to show timeline and see the timeline for let's say last 10 or 5 minutes you will see that traffic to reviews v1 service is increasing and the traffic to other review service is reaching or approaching zero so over here 70 percent of traffic is going to review service let's go to infrastructure and we will see a similar trend we can actually go back over here and we can see that the three versions of review service are running in our default namespace let's move on to our next subtask and let's say that we want to route traffic to a specific version of service based on user identity let's say we have a user json and we want to say that if any request comes from this user it has to go to review service version v2 so i'm gonna quickly go and copy this over here and you will see that it says it is configured because the service was already there we just changed it and if you get if you run this url you will see that the reviews virtual service has been created let's get back to our manifest and see the rest of the things that we have over here so this particular section this defines the default route for all other incoming requests that do not match the above route specifically it is routing traffic to v1 subset of review service so overall what we understand from this is this manifest creates a virtual service that applies to review service and routes the incoming traffic to either v1 or v2 subset of service based on whether the end user http header has a value of json this is a basic example of how we can use virtual service to implement traffic routing based on http headers in issue service mesh so let's go back we created the virtual service already let me quickly copy this command as well so that we can see the traffic in our dashboards we will later see what this command is doing so i'm going to copy this and run over here So now since we have created the virtual service let's go ahead and check the ui so i'll go back and if i refresh the product page service we see that we don't see stars yet let's click on sign in and give the user as json and no password and if you click on sign in now you see that we are now seeing stars because after sign in the service is accessing the v2 version of review service so if i refresh the page now again and again i'll keep on seeing the stars we ran this command few minutes back over here we are essentially starting a new stage session generating only 20 percent of traffic of first but with all requests being authenticated as json now if we go back to our dashboard we will see that the v1 version of service is still receiving traffic and some of the traffic that we started from our sage session is being sent to v2 version of service v3 as such is not receiving any traffic why v1 service is receiving traffic because earlier we created this service and uh, after that we modified the virtual service and over here it says that if 
you are receiving a request that does not match this header rule you have to route it to v1 service so all the requests from this particular stage session are going to v1 version of service and all the requests from this particular curl session are going to v2 version of service now let's clean up our services so i'll go back over here back to our dashboard press ctrl c and let's delete all our virtual services that we created now in our next subtask i want to shift traffic from one version of microservice to another how do i do that first let's create virtual services that route traffic to only v1 version of services so i'll go back over here and run this command we are creating virtual service all hyphen v1 which is this virtual service all hyphen v1 and over here we are routing request to only v1 version of services so this is created let's go back over here so i'll quickly go back to our product page and refresh and now i should not see any stars because v1 version of service does not access the star rating service let me quickly go back and run this command so over here we created this particular manifest from this url we have this manifest in our manifest folder as well so let's see this is the one so over here you can see that there are two destination routes it is sending 50 percent of traffic to v1 version of review service and rest 50 percent to v3 version of review service so let's go back to our product page and refresh our browser in this case we are not seeing any stars because request went to v1 so let's do a hard refresh we see again v1 version of ratings refresh once again again v1 let's refresh a few times more and we see red stars which means the request went to v3 again it went to v3 so we see that roughly 50% of requests go to v1 and 50% of requests go to v3. Just to let you know guys, I ran out of time in the previous quick lab session. So I had to start the overall subtasks from the beginning. I have reached the same point. The only thing that will change in this case will be uh, the public IP. Previously, we were accessing our product page uh, website on this public IP. Now we are accessing it on this page, but we are, we are at the same spot. 50% of the traffic is being routed to V1 and 50% to V3. And this is how our graph looks like. Our learnings are going to remain the same so let's move on to our next subtask now we want to migrate our traffic from v1 to v3 completely so i'm going to run this manifest over here So in the output, you see that uh, our reviews virtual service was configured because the service was already present. We just configured it differently. This is the URL of the manifest that we just applied. In this URL, you can see that I want to route all the request to a destination host of review service, which is from the subset V3. So now if we go back to our product page back again and refresh any number of times every time we should see red stars because 
now all our requests are going to v3 version of review service and if we go back to our dashboard and do a hard refresh you will see that now the traffic is being routed to v3 version of service and the traffic which v1 service was receiving is now slowly proceeding to zero so let's go back and delete all our virtual services that we created so all our virtual services are deleted let's move on to our next subtask we will add timeouts to avoid waiting indefinitely for service replies so i'll go and apply this version of manifest where we are sending traffic to v1 version of all the apps next we will modify our reviews virtual service such that it will route traffic only to subset v2 version which calls the rating service for the stars and in the rating service we will induce a two second delay over here so that the rating service will reply only after a fixed delay of two seconds So if we go back to our dashboard and do a hard refresh, we will see that currently the traffic is being routed to V1 version and V2 and V3 are not receiving any traffic because we applied this manifest. Now we will update the reviews virtual service such that it only sends traffic to subset V2. So I'm going to go ahead and apply this virtual service and it will get configured. And I will go and copy this as well. Here we are modifying the ratings virtual service in a way that we are adding fixed delay of two seconds to 100% of the requests that go to rating service. So I'll go and apply this and it will get configured as well. This is our previous response from rating service. This response was from version V3. So if I do a hard refresh now, I should receive the black stars over here because black stars are what we get from V2 version of service and it should be after a delay of two seconds. So let me do a hard refresh. Let's see the response now. So after a delay of two seconds, I get black stars. Let's move ahead now and this time what we want to do is we want to tell the review service that if you do not receive a response within 0.5 seconds just do a timeout. So we are inducing this timeout of 0.5 seconds in reviews virtual service. Let's go ahead and go back to our dashboard apply this so the review service will call the rating service and if it does not receive a response it's going to time out so I'll go back and we know that the rating service is going to respond only after two seconds and we also know that the review service is only going to wait for 0.5 seconds so let's do a hard refresh and expected it does it did not get a response and so we see that the product reviews are currently unavailable we can do a hard refresh as many times and every time you will see the same error so let's go back and uh, clean up all our virtual services And again, let me apply this 
for our next subtask. Again, we'll be sending all the traffic to V1 ver version of our apps. So in our next subtask, we are going to add circuit breakers to enhance our microservices resiliency. We'll create a destination rule to apply circuit breaking setting when calling the product page service. Let's have a look at this destination rule as well. So over here, the name of the destination rule is product page. This specifies the host name that this destination rule will apply to. This is product page service itself. Over here, this defines a subset of the product page service called V1 that has a label of version V1. In this particular section, we are defining connection pool setting for the service. Specifically, it limits the maximum number of TCP connections to one and the maximum number of pending HTTP requests per connection to one. And so forth, we have other properties as well outlined over here. Now let's go back and apply this manifest. So I'll copy this part and go back to our cloud shell and apply. So our destination rule is configured. In this subtask, we will create a client to send traffic to product page service. We are going to use Fortio as our load testing client. Fortio lets us to control the number of connections, concurrency, and delays for outgoing HTTP calls. We will be using this client to trip the circuit breaker policies we set in the destination rule. So let me go ahead and apply this. Next, let's log into the client pod and use the Fortio tool to call the product page service. We'll pass the URL to indicate that we just want to make a call. So I will copy this and get the name of the Fortio pod. So this is the name of the pod. Now I'll run kubectl exec command. This is the command which will be running inside the container Fortio, which is inside this pod. So I'm going to copy this and run it over here. And we get a 200 OK response. Now let's call the service with two concurrent connections and send 20 requests. So I'll copy this. And let's run this command. And we see that for 18 requests, we got 200 OK. And for two requests, we got 503. Let's bring the number of concurrent connections to three and run the command back again. And this time we got 200 OK only for 11 and 503 for 19 requests. The reason why we got so many errors is because we added circuit breaking property in our destination rules. We said that the maximum number of TCP connections can be one. So when we started with two connections, we got only two errors, which means that issue does give you some leeway. But when we increased the number of connections to three, we started seeing the circuit breaking behavior more predominantly. We got 19 occurrences of 503 errors. So this completes all of our subtasks. That's all for today. See you in the next video.